Captain Ali, 4,000 feet, uh, speed uh, 180 knots, one double jingle. Hi, it's Natalie, uh, Fly Girl Kelly, and in this episode, Alyssa and I are going to talk to Valerie. I like to call her Captain Valerie. I don't know where she got that name. Uh, Valerie has done some uh, YouTube videos with uh, Steve-O Canivo, which if you know anything about aviation and YouTube videos, and you have heard of him, if not seen him, and um, Valerie has become not a regular, but she's been on a few of his videos, and I love seeing her on there. I feel like I know a celebrity, (laughs) Captain Valerie. Uh, Valerie, is I can relate to Valerie um, as well because she was a little bit older when she started to pursue flying. She always had a love of aviation. It was always something that she wanted to do. She wanted to be a pilot, and we talked about that. Her husband was a pilot as well, and she is uh, very passionate about staying proficient. She's a very safe pilot. I've flown with her before. I feel completely at ease when she's flying her very cool Baron and turbocharged Baron airplane. It's so cool. Um, And her personality, she is actually Canadian and her personality really shines through in this podcast. I enjoy being around her. I met her at Oshkosh, um, I think last year, and we've been able to stay in contact and visit with each other since then whenever I'm in Florida because she lives in Delray Beach, which uh, anywhere in Florida is one of my favorite places. Florida is just near and dear to my heart. So hopefully you will enjoy getting to know Valerie, Captain Valerie, as well in this episode. And now Captain Valerie and I on this episode, and Alyssa, of course, this episode of Cockpits and Cocktails. So, so what's been to do? See you, Alyssa. You well, we're working. We're working on uh, on our annual. We were supposed to start back in November. And, oh um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just too much work, and um, then you know, <coughs> yeah, it's just been postponed and postponed and postponed. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. just come there and work on it. You don't have to take it to anywhere. No, no, we have um, we have our mechanic. He comes here. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He comes here like uh, usually he comes here on Friday and he stays over until Sunday. But uh, this weekend he was here uh, just Sunday, but I was in class. Okay. So that okay. that didn't really work. I I love being there when he's here because yeah. He teaches me so much. I learn so much when he's here. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, he told me, he he gave me a few websites to look at. And uh, we are having the um, starter, starter adapter. Oh, this, this thing. Oh, wow. Thing. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Whatever that does. That's a starter? that's, That's a starter adapter. Okay. It's big. So, yeah. Yeah, it's it's big. Water. I mean, you know, that's my hand. So that's funny. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the one that was in the plane. And uh in the continental, it's behind. So it's like a pain in the ass. Yeah. Um we're not recording, right? We no, are. No. no. <laughs> I mean, we won't post it, but we are recording. <laughs> we, we record the whole thing pretty much and then go back and, and edit it. Um, so, yeah, so it's a pain in the butt um, because it's behind yeah. the, uh, the engine. So you have to take everything out. And, um, yeah, so we, that's what we've been dealing with um, so you, uh, kind of like You like to observe and watch everything that he's doing? I do, but I wasn't here yesterday because I was in class. Trying to get my commercial written done. Okay. Okay. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. 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 So, well, I'll let you um, kind of, I guess, introduce yourself to Alyssa and um, pretty much your, your introduction where you can just tell a little bit about yourself and um, how you got in aviation or whatever you want to say, your own little intro. Okay. Um, so I always wanted to become a pilot. Always. Uh, I was young. I watched 
Top Gun, and um, I wanted to become a pilot way, 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 way back then, but did not have anyone in my family to, um, you know, to reach out to. And so I just kind of like let it go. And I was really into horseback riding. I was just, you know, a lot into horseback riding. So I just focused on that. But still in my mind, I wanted to become a pilot. Um, But it just didn't happen. And uh, I met my husband. And back in 2010, he came up to me and uh, we're like having dinner with my parents. My parents were in town. He said, I'm starting my, uh, I'm sorry, flying lessons tomorrow. I'm like, what? (laughs) <laughs> we never talk about this. We never talked about this <laughs> ever. And I'm like, I always wanted to become a pilot. We never talk about this. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Where did this come from? Yeah. Where is this coming from? Yeah. So, well, I always wanted to become a pilot. My grandfather was a pilot. I'm like, oh my God. We never had that discussion. So, he started his uh, flying lessons, and um, then we got a 182, and I'm like, well, I need to know how to land this thing. Yeah. And uh, so back in 2012, after he got his private, I started to get flying lessons and just, you know, learning how to land the 182. That was it. And and this this little girl back in you know, way back then was coming out and I'm like, gosh, that's exactly what I wanted to do. And, and I told my husband, that I, I'm going to continue as well. We have work and this and that. And blah, blah, blah. So life got in the way. Yeah. Life completely got in the way. And, um, but in 2016, I started again and, um, he had some, medical issues and we could not fly and we had a plane in the hangar that was just you know sitting there pretty looking just way way too yeah. pretty yeah and uh and I'm like I have to get back and start again and so I got my private and uh got my instrument and didn't get my commercial because I needed to fly a multi-engine so I jumped in Got my multi-engine rating, and uh, here I am. Yeah. Probably have like so, you know six six hundred fifty hours right now. Nice, yeah. So at what point yeah. did you sell the one eighty two and get the the Baron? We, my my husband wanted to make sure we were going to be safe flying over the Bahamas. So he was talking to a lot of friends, and um, his um his you know, biggest thing was having a twin and we found this one and um, the lady had uh, just, you know, she could not use the Baron at all. And um, we looked at it and it just got new engines and uh, it, it, it made sense, you know. The only thing was it was a turbo charge. Turbo charge is a lot of work. So we we're like, hey, you know, that's just a lot of a plane. And But we were confident it was going to be a good plane for us. We have friends come in Colorado. I have family up in Canada. So if we had to go in high altitude, it was going to bring us wherever we wanted, we, we needed to be. Yeah. So that's it. So that's that's what happened. So did you, you okay, so you went from the 182 to, to the Baron. Yeah. And you always knew you wanted a multi because of all the travel that you wanted to do, or what made you decide that you wanted that? Well, let me just backtrack a little bit. I I thought I was going to just fly the 182. Okay. But then one day my husband believed that the best plane was going to be a twin because we were going to the Bahamas a lot okay. and flying over the water with yeah. one engine. That's scary. A little bit scary. Kind of. yeah, yeah. A little bit scary. Yeah. So his biggest thing was 
that one engine and us being in water if something would happen. Yeah. So the twin, yeah, the yeah. twin was definitely the way to go. And did you go to the Bahamas just for like vacation or why did you? Yeah, yeah, that's really what we were doing back then. Back mm -hmm. then we were going to the Bahamas just for vacation and uh, we met a lot of friends and um, then the big hurricane came up and yeah, yeah. so we've been traveling to the Bahamas a lot. Yeah. Um, not lately because we had to have an inspection or annual. But, uh, yeah, we've been doing a lot of uh, flights yeah. and bringing supplies. And I still have, like, a full shelf over there with <laughs> yeah, supplies. Yeah, talking about that. And now yeah. you're from uh, Canada, correct? Yes, yes. Yeah. And that was the best flight ever. Uh, when, when I've seen you, Alyssa, at Oshkosh, we didn't have time to talk about that. But we flew to... Georgia. That was our first. Um, I'm gonna have a little bit of water. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that was our first, our first stop. And then um, to to Clayton, Georgia, which is Heaven's Landing. Okay. And oh, then, uh, that's right. Oh, yeah. About that. Yeah. 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 So that was our first stop, and then we um, continued our journey. And back then, there was a lot of storms, a lot of storms. So we kind of had to wait a little bit. And we could not land in Oshkosh. Oshkosh was closed. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. It was like the super The did not have <laughs> <those> skills. <laughs> no, no. It was super muddy. Don't think about landing a twin in here. You had to be a husky with like big old will so you could be in the grass. So that was, yeah. that was not us. Yeah. Uh, so we went to Appleton. We yeah. tried. We really tried. We had uh, we had a rent a car uh, at uh, the FB over there. So I'm like, well, I'm just gonna land. I'm gonna drop off my husband. And the tower control started to laugh. He was like, uh, what? What are you saying? <coughs> well, yeah, I'm just gonna just like stop and drop off my husband. And I'm not going to park. I swear. And and that was just a really funny story anyway so we landed in <laughs> we landed in Appleton yeah and um yeah so we spent the whole week at uh, Oshkosh and then we went to Canada okay. one stop in Burlington mm -hmm. went to Quebec City oh that sounds so cool so, that's one of my dreams is to fly to Canada because just because I can and you know in all the travels I've done I've never been to Canada and it's really not that far it's Silly. So no, right. I think that'd be a super fun um, little trip to do. We could have a girls' trip. Yeah, that would be really fun. Uh, we're planning to do that every year now. Oh, nice. Uh, we, yes. So, so that's the goal. That's the goal. That's going to be the routine, and uh, we're going to start with uh, Heaven's Landing, and then we're going to go to Oshkosh, yeah. and um, then we're going to go to Canada. Uh, I'm really glad. I'm really glad I attended some seminars at um, at Oshkosh. I attended the same seminar three times just to make sure I yeah. was going to be good. Yeah. And, and 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 I had to repeat the whole you know process in my head, make sure, making sure I was not going to break any rules. And uh, it went well. And I yeah. had a few, you know, business cards in case I, I had some questions. And, and people from, uh, you know, the AOPA in Canada, which is the COPA, okay. were extremely helpful. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, so that's... So you hadn't, you're from Canada, but you haven't actually flown your own plane up there until last that year. That was the first okay. time. Okay. Oh. First First time, yeah. Yeah. First was time. it difficult? How difficult was it? It wasn't difficult. Um, you know, you still have to file EAPIS. I mm -hmm. mean, it's the same thing that uh, we do when we go to the Bahamas. Okay. EAPIS is just something you have to do. And then you call, um, you know, a phone number over there. And I don't have my notes, but uh, you have a phone number that you have to call. Let them know that you're going to be arriving. And... Um, then you don't even go to customs. 
You just okay. wait. Okay. You wait in the plane. Yeah. And like, and if they're not coming to you, yeah, you're calling them, like within five minutes, and you call them, and then they give you a phone, a, a number, just like a number, and that's it. You're good. But you're waiting in your aircraft until they say, okay, you're clear. Here's your number, and you're good to go. Yeah. So were you, were you visiting your family there? Is that why? Yeah. You, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I talked to um, Dion Mitten. He had done a trip to Canada or through Canada, and they were uh, ferrying a float plane, I believe, from um, either Canada or Alaska to Florida or something. And Dion's been traveling quite a bit. Yeah, and mm -hmm. so he did this trip, and he said, yeah, it was the craziest thing. You know, you think it's really hard to, like, fly into Canada and go through the customs and things, and he's like, we literally landed, called him up, and they were like, okay, you're good to go. And that's it. Like, that's you're like, it. hey. And yeah. there's a huge yeah. difference when you leave um, yeah. the United States and, whoops, suddenly you speak to Montreal. They're so chill. Mm. Hey, what's going on? What's up? And they're, they're just, like, very, very relaxed. Wow. Yeah. And I don't know. It's look. I hate to say that, but it, it's a little bit less structured. And, yeah. uh, and, and this past weekend, I talked to someone that started his flying lessons in Toronto. And that's exactly what he said. He said, here in the United States, we have, we are very structured and the radio is super fast. And even like our clearance, you have to be really, really quick and, and get that clearance done but over there they take their time mm -hmm. they're making sure that you understand and they, you know it's really 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 different yeah so uh, what, is, what is general aviation like there in canada like compared to here like are there um, a lot of pilots general aviation is it the cost about the same or what's the well, what's the process like i'll tell you i got a lot of invoices in the mail Oh, yeah. Landing fees or yeah, like yeah. that. Like that's the fact. And that's something that I've learned about in that seminar at mm -hmm. uh, at uh, the um, EAA Air Venture, and uh, I was aware of it, but I it, it did not click that much, you know. Yeah. So I'm getting I'm getting this invoice in the mail. And I'm like, okay, yes, I'm aware of it. No problem. We'll pay that. And then I'm getting another invoice. I'm like, I think I paid that already. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So if I'm making a call, I'm like, well, I'm sure I paid that already. So no, this is for this and that. And that's for something else. I'm like, okay. So I paid that already. I, I paid that again. I, whatever that was that was a second invoice and then there was another invoice just to be in the airspace mm -hmm. what? and so so there's there's a few things but if you are flying in canada on the regular basis you're canadian and you fly you just have to pay that fee annually and okay. you're done you know yeah um it saves you money, but it's when you're, you know, like registration or something, you know, like how they're registered there versus here. Or yeah, it's, it's a little different. So I yeah. got, you know, many different invoices in the mail, probably three. And plus, you know, parking and landing. So did you take, when you were in Canada, did you take any of your family flying? I did. Yes. And that was so surreal. I, I actually took my mother, my, uh, my godmother, my godmother and okay. her husband. Yeah. And, um, that was special. That what was really, say? really did, Well, she loved it. Yeah. She absolutely loved it. That was her first time flying with me. Uh, and, and it was just really, really nice. I didn't fly my parents over there. I flew my parents when they were down in, in Florida. Okay, um, yeah. But I didn't have enough time to fly everybody. You yeah. know? And on the top of that, I had landing fees each time that I oh, landed yeah. there. Yeah. So I'm like, well, you know, that's, that's good that I just landed one 
mm-hmm. more time, you know, with my family because I would have had even. I didn't realize so, till I was in Europe uh, with one of my friends that every time they land, they are charged a fee. Uh, whether we're you're very not- lucky here. Yeah. yeah. So we are very, very lucky. I mean, it could be any amount as well. Like every airport was so different. Um, and so typically they would just go fly and do one landing. And I, I got to thinking like how lucky we are in our training that we can go and do 20 landings in a session or something. And, oh my God. and we're yes. $30 every time we land, because, you know, I was thinking like, it, I think the United States in doing that that way, it keeps us safer because we're able to go out and, and do those practice, you know, landings and things and not, not be doing one each time. And, right. you know, yeah. flying yeah. around and just doing one. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah. yeah. We're very lucky, very lucky here. We don't even know it. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, and thanks to AOPA, a lot of, of, the people at AOP are fighting for us to make sure that we don't get those fees. They would all get privatized. You know, yeah. we don't get like private airports and right. paying all these huge fees, which that's going to bring us exactly where Europe is and yeah. Canada. Yeah. A lot of fees are. Which kind of uh, keeps people from flying so much because it's just yeah. so. It's expensive, expensive. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 The aviation that's field there is in Europe, I know, is outrageous cost wise too. So it's it's just, you know, we're, we are very, very lucky. So we're super lucky. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me, I wanna know, um, when you were you met your husband, y'all you live in a, a hangar community. Yeah. When did you Airport decide to community. yeah, when did you decide to move there? Um, back in 2012, we started to looking f- look for homes, and um, my my husband grew up in South Florida, mm-hmm. and he did not even know about Antiquers area drum. He had no idea. So our realtor found this area, and she said, "Well, there's no homes available." Well, I'll tell you. He was here every single day, knocking on home, say, hey, do you have a house for sale? Do you want to sell your house? And he was here every single day. Yeah. And and he was a he was a pain <laughs> for a lot of neighbors. He's persistent. <laughs> yeah, he was very persistent. And um and one day, well, I mean, we, we even like uh, started to try to buy homes that we did not even want. That was how desperate we were yeah. to be here. And um, one day he was just driving on Skyline. And um, that's that's where the Skyline Baron Pallet comes from, because that's Skyline Drive. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, and then this this lady, this realtor, puts the sign, uh, you know, in front of the house, and like, wow, you're selling the house, you're selling this house, and she's like, yeah, yeah, the lady just passed away, and um, yeah, this house is for sale, and it's like, okay, can I meet up with you? I'm gonna bring my wife, and we'll just right now, <laughs> yeah. right now, yeah, right now. <laughs> And I was there that day, and we met with um, the realtor and the son, and uh, got a tour. And uh, yeah, that was not that long. Wow, not that Why long. Did you be in that community, that specific community. It, it, we have when well, my my in laws are not too far, and we've okay. been in South Florida for so long. Yeah. This community is five minutes from downtown Delray Beach. Okay. I mean, seven minutes, you know, and um, and that's not too far from the beach. Not a lot of people know about this community. You're downtown Delray Beach, and then you drive, and then, whoops, this is, you know, Antiquers Area Drum. It's really two worlds. It's not too far like Willis or Wellington. Uh, we were looking at Wellington because it's a beautiful community, beautiful community. They have a paved runway, but it was just a little too far for us. So this community 
fit every single um, check mark on yeah. her list. Man, I'm so glad that worked out for y'all. Yeah, it really, yeah. really worked out. Yeah, I, I have can't, been wait, for you, can't wait for you. for you to come back. Kelly, yeah, no, it's such a here. cool house. Yeah, y'all did such a good job uh, renovating it, and it's a really neat, neat spot. Yeah, thank you. Hopefully, Alyssa, you come down here soon. Please. Yeah, I would love yeah. to. Mm-hmm. I actually was thinking about it after um, we talked about you know doing the podcast and thing today. I was thinking, and I was like. I couldn't remember exactly when the first time we met, but then I was thinking about it and I'm like, I think it was at Triple Tree was the first time we met, maybe. We we met actually the first time at Oshkosh. You were working with Hooker Harness. The, uh, yeah, the Hooker Harness, yes. Okay. Well, no. Oh. So so I we were in Triple Tree in June of this year. And Oshkosh was July, right? Wasn't it like another um, meetup at Triple Tree after that? No. So I was there, um, Trevor charted all. His birthday was in June around like the 20th. And it was the young aviators fly in. Mm -hmm. And you guys, there was a really bad storm that came in after we were there. Yes. Um, So I remember, I think that's the first time we had met. And... So I, I, we were flying in in a 172 and a Mooney, we were flying in together and I heard a female pilot and she was gaining on us pretty quickly. And I was like, what is she flying that she is going so fast? And she had a little bit of an accent. So I was like, who is this girl? I must meet her. I was just like, how cool. And then uh, meeting you and your husband and, I was like, that's right. Ah. So I couldn't remember if he was wow. the pilot and you were the pilot. And then I remember getting online and kind of following you at that point. And then, yeah. And then you guys came by the booth to say hi. Yes, and, that's it, that's- and wow. Yeah, so it was the young aviators flying at triple tree. I would love to go back to triple tree. Um, if I fly to sun and fun, my plan is to go up North and go to triple tree and then come back that way. But cool. Um, cool. That's such a cool, unique place. I wish we could have stayed longer, but we had a really bad storm come in. Um, yeah, it was pretty bad. And, and and the community is really neat. The runway goes down. Yeah. So so you're coming in and, you know, it's a grass runway and it, co- it comes like like downhill. And, yeah. And, um, but it's long enough where, you know, it's yeah. not a problem at it's all. Really, Triple Tree is a really cool place. and Yeah, very cool place. The very camp cool setup place. is really neat because it's not like uh, Oshkosh where they have fields of parking where they park you to camp, actually. There's, there's taxiways that go kind of through like a wooded area that you can camp out. It's just really neat. So, it's yeah. Really, I'd like to go. I've, I've wanted to yeah, go. It's but nice. I haven't go yet. It's yeah. yeah, it's very nice. We um, we happened to be in Wilmington with our nieces, uh, like right around the same, uh, you know, same time. And we were supposed to bring both both of them. We just brought one of our nieces to the triple tree flying. And it was just a day, you know, a day thing for us. Yeah. And that wall was coming in, remember? Uh, it was like it was so coming bad. in. Yeah, we got uh, stuck. And- we got stuck in um, maybe Georgia somewhere. I can't remember where we got stuck, but we we were like, okay, let's land, get for fuel, and tie down. And so we ate dinner, and I think we did a video of, like, that line going through. <laughs> oh, man, it was insane. So. I remember some people going down that night. We stayed in Wilmington and left, I think, the next day. So we were we were fine. We we even flew over whatever storms that was, and it yeah. was not even a big deal. But there was a lot of square lines, yeah. a lot of uh, big storms uh, down. Yeah. They were not super high, but high enough for if you were going to fly VFR. Yeah, that was pretty so bad. Full of stuff like that, you know? Yeah, Somewhere. yeah, yeah. You have like 650 hours or whatever you said. What what is your end goal for this? I mean, you want to be a pilot, you want to fly for fun, obviously we all do. But yes, do you want to be airline? Do you want to fly for um, Beechcraft? What what's the scoop? 
Well, of course, you know, I love Beechcraft. I, I love Beechcraft. Beechcraft oh, is God. definitely, you know. I love oh, no, all the magazines. Yes, yeah. I have all the magazines everywhere. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I would love to have uh, Mindy's job. Mindy yeah. has the best job it's ever. So yeah. Yes. And, uh, but uh, I would not, and, and okay, I'm not going to say never, but that's, Airline is not something that I would be, um, you know, looking for. However, I probably would like a part-time job for, you know, corporate, like any business, some something cool like uh, King Air or a yeah. jet or, you know, something, yeah. something like that. Um, now, you but, would you continue your business? So you and your husband run a business. Yes. Yeah. Right. And would you can even aviation related, like we're not yeah. even aviation related. Would you continue doing that as well? As I have no choice. Yeah. Oh, okay. And that would be something part time. Yeah. OK. It definitely had to be something part time or, you know, if I could even scale down on the time, then maybe putting more time into um, something aviation related, which I wish that's all I would do. Yeah. That that's the that's only it. thing that makes me truly happy mm -hmm. is is flying. You know, when I'm up there, it's where I'm meant to be. I wish that's all I would do. Yeah. Really. We all have that feeling. And exactly. I find I think as women that are not 20 years old coming straight out of high school and college, you know, yeah. in this we're in this group of people like we make we have a career and we have something we're passionate about, but how do we blend those and make those work? And it's like, exactly. I can't, I can't quit my job to make minimum wage again, flying for an airline or something. And it's not really where my heart is anyways. Like I want to be flying something for fun and something that has, you know, people that I can interact with still. And, uh, yeah. that. so it's, it's, it's kind of, funny it's fun to see those like your story and to see like where you want to go and do because it's and, and Natalie's in the same boat you know we all we all want to do aviation to some extent but yeah you, know, you have families and you have career responsibilities and, right. yes right it's, it's for our hard, airplanes. <laughs> yeah it's hard to kind of like switch and just like you know like okay I'm just going to become a pilot but yeah, there's but somehow I believe there's going to be there is there is a way to blend them somehow. <laughs> you know, I don't know what that's going to yeah. look like exactly, but um, I do believe there's there's opportunities for things like that. So just yeah. keep my eyes open, you know, and my and my ears open for things. I yeah, wanted to you're doing you know, you're you doing well. Um, well, I, I love what I do, so it's good. Um, I love running the fly roll and all that. But I wanted to find out more about, you went to flight safety, is that right? Or is it Simcom? Yes, Simcom. That was uh, that was really, really, really good. It, it was mostly to make sure I kept myself proficient with the Baron. It, it saved money as far as, you know, flying and getting some emergencies done. But they go through so many different things that it could happen. Fire, ice, uh, smoke in the cockpit, uh, engine failure. And they make sure that you're going to get this like down to a science by the time you're leaving. And they're extremely, extremely pro professional. And uh, I was, you know, the only one uh, in the class. So I had one instructor for myself. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. Yeah. It was, it was really, really good. I highly, highly suggest. Was it like a week? It was a full weekend. I got yeah. there. Yeah. I got there Friday at eight and left uh -huh. off Sunday, Sunday evening. Now, do they do that specific to what aircraft you're flying? Is that yes. available for anything or? They don't have every single aircraft. They have the Baron, Baron, um, Baron uh, 58 double charge and Baron 58P. And they had um, some Citation and uh, Hawker and King Air. And I forgot, you know, 
of their yeah. aircraft. They had, they had, uh, like they, uh, which one? I think they had some Airbus and other things like that. But so uh, you, yeah. Were- you heard about it and you thought, you know, I feel like I need to work a little bit more on some of these maybe emergencies or just want to make sure I, I feel well-rounded or ready or what yeah. made you to do it? Yeah. Well, Eric got this uh, certificate in uh, Oshkosh, not in uh, back in 2019, but back in 2018. And um, we needed to use it because it was going to expire. Gotcha. And okay. yeah, so um, I called them as well as about it expired. And I know the certificate is under my husband's name, but... Uh, you know, I'm the PIC here, so yeah. uh, can I switch it to my name? And that was not a problem at all. They were extremely uh, accommodating and um, made an appointment and got uh, that training done. I think that was uh, well, sometime in November. And, um, yeah, they were, they were very, very good, very good. Yeah. I highly, highly suggest to anyone to get their training and at Simcom, if they have, uh, you know, whatever plane they have over yeah. there. Is that something you would go back and do? Every oh, yeah. Time? Yeah. Yeah, totally, totally. Um, it keeps you proficient. And it, it, of course, you know, it's good for your insurance. I sent uh, my certificate to my insurance company. I also sent um, my certificate to uh, one of my uh, FAA connections that I have. Um, making sure that he knows that I'm, you know, up to date, making sure I have everything in order. You never know, you know, something happens and uh, it's not your fault. You you better be on your game and have everything in order. So they just see, well, that was just a fluke. You know, this this person has, you know, making, she makes sure, he makes sure that they're up to date in their training. And that's so important. Yeah. So important. So yes. So I, yeah. I am. I'm planning to get training there every year, oh, and good. that takes care of your um, biannual. Okay. Yeah. 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 Now you're working on your commercial. You mentioned. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. How's How's that going? You preparing for your written? Well, yeah, I'm preparing for my written. Okay. Um, you know, that's just a lot of a lot of information, a lot yeah. of formulas to to uh, remember. Uh, the um, testing facility was completely shut down over the weekend, so uh-huh. I couldn't take my test. Uh, okay. However, I would not have been ready, mm. so I still have to um, to study this week, yeah. get, get a few practice tests done, making sure I score over 85 or something. Yeah. What so, program you know. are you using to study? Uh, well, I'm going to use their uh, American Flyers. They have okay. that website. And I'm also uh, using Shepherd Air. Okay. Have you, yeah. have you used Shepherd Air? Yes. I've, I've heard really good things about Shepherd Air from a lot of people. So, Shepherd Air, I used it for pretty much all my writtens. And I always took my writtens as soon as I started training, pretty much, um, just to kind of get it out of the way. And it's uh, there's a lot of memorization. Yes. And, and a lot of it didn't make sense until I really started flying. You know, yeah. I kind of memorized a lot of answers and then it didn't all really click until I actually started doing the flying and everything. I was like, oh, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I always scored in the 90s on my on my written, so it, it yep. was good for that. That's awesome. That's good. I think the written the hardest. Oh, my gosh, what's your son doing? <laughs> That's my mom. Oh, <laughs> Hi, Mom. so I couldn't see it. Sorry, <laughs> just edit that out. But I was like, "What is happening?" <laughs> uh, I, the written for me is the hardest part because I think as I've gotten older, it's just harder to make myself study because I have so many other um, things I have. Fun. And, <laughs> yeah, and flying is more fun. <laughs> And so yeah, it, it, flying is so much more fun. Yeah. That, I think I'm struggling like with the IFR stuff, not struggling flying it, but I'm really struggling with just not getting to see outside the cockpit and, and not get to enjoy that part of it. But it, it is really awesome to, you know, be on the glide path, you know, coming in and, ah, oh, there's the, there's the airport, you know? So it's, yeah. 
it's kind of the cool. Inst- to- the instrument rating is the best. It's challenging, it's, but it's it's truly really really is the most rewarding rating that you would ever get in I your agree. life. Yeah. It's so hard to get through and you get through it and you're like, wow, I feel like I can pretty much fly anything now. If you can do yeah. that. Yeah. And then you miss it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then you truly miss the training and, and like the daily, like, I don't know. I, I, I miss the training of the instrument um, you- rating. Yeah, I do. I think I with do. the written, Alyssa, I always... I always hated the studying for the written either, but I would schedule it on my calendar and just be like, this week, I'm not doing anything but this. And that's that's, it. You just, you just stop. You can't have, do anything else. You force yourself to do it. You have to just stop. That's exactly what you have to do. That's all you have to have in your brain. Yeah. Instrument rated <laughs> knowledge. Yeah. Right. So I need it to stop scheduling so much. trips. <laughs> yes, right. You need to stop scheduling trips. <laughs> yeah, I need to just cancel like my next three months. And <laughs> it's like a week. Just say, okay, it's a one week. I can take one week in my. Well, I actually, I'm like, okay, if I can start studying really hard and putting it together, I think um, one of my girlfriends up in Michigan just got her double I. And I was like, how fun would it be to go up with her and study at night and, you know, get to fly with her during the day for a week straight, two weeks straight, and just push out my rating. Like, yeah. I think it would be a whole lot of fun. And I think she would make it that fun and not so strenuous. And Yeah. yeah. So tell me, Val, I know you've got to leave. You've got a party or something to go to. But I want to know I what you see, see maybe me. some of your fa- maybe one of your favorite trips or one of your favorite airports or one of your most memorable flights. My number one was coming into Quebec City. That's definitely my number one. Um, just because that's where I'm from. My family were waiting for me, and I've been working so hard to just get there. So it was like, you know, everything was like coming together to just get there. That was the most rewarding trip ever. And I will never forget the landing and coming into the FBO. And of course, going to Oshkosh for the first time. We did not land in Oshkosh. We landed at Appleton. However, it was close by. We spoke with everybody nearby that we're going to Appleton um so that would be my number two my number three would be landing at um Heaven's Landing Heaven's Landing is absolutely beautiful it's in North Georgia um Clayton North Georgia and it's Sine Valley so you're coming in you don't even see the airport and the way it, 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 it the way it's built is just very rewarding when you touch the ground. Um, that would that would be my number three, and yeah. it's just so beautiful. Yeah, it's, have you you talked really about? I remember you y'all showed me a video when I was there. I think it was like a sales video or a YouTube video or something of of that airport, and you were talking about that's going to be like a regular spot for for you to visit, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Is yeah, it kind we, of a um, flying community as well? Yeah, there. it's a flying community. Heaven's Landing is a flying community. Um, I can't remember how many lots they have over there, but uh, they're still growing. Uh, they have a beautiful lake called Lake Burton. The uh, city nearby is Clayton. And uh, it, it's just absolutely gorgeous. We are so proud to be part of this community. We purchased a lot uh, back in 2019 over there. And um, That's for now we're renting, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for now we're just like renting little cabins here and there. And yeah. uh, we don't have, you know, our house built yet. Um, yeah. But uh, I, I hope you guys can join us. You know, oh, that sounds awesome. Days over yeah. there. Yeah, it's just it's the best. We go fly fishing. We have a Humvee yeah. over there. We just go mudding, and it's the I best can't treat mudding, but uh, 
Yeah, yeah, so yeah. fun. With my, with my pinky in the air. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think all three of us will all go mudding together. <laughs> like, ah! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can be, I can be a tomboy. You'll see me. <laughs> now, if you could, if you could have any other airplane, um, what would you have? Like, if you had any choice of airplane in the world, what, what, what else would you have in the hangar? Um, I would, I would have a, um, an NFIB, um, oh, you know, nice. any type of NFIB where I could go, uh, you know, uh, on, on water and then just land on grass or land on asphalt. Yeah. Uh, I would definitely, uh, get something like that. Um, either a mall or a husky mm. or something just to sightseeing, you know, right now we're just like getting from point A to point B mm-hmm. and we're like, so fast. more fun flying a little yeah. uh, enjoyment. Yeah. Of it. yeah. Florida is a great exactly. plane to have. Um, there's so many lakes and things like that in Florida to have like a float plane or something like that. Yeah. 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 I wish, I wish that's what we, uh, that would be the next plane, something yeah. like an NFIB. Yeah. That we could land here and uh, land on the water as well. Yeah. You're getting your seaplane rating soon, hopefully. I know. I'm scheduled for it. Yeah, in uh, uh, March. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. I'm, Are you I'm, going to Jack Brown's? No, I'm going to jo- uh, Jones Brothers, it's called. Oh, yeah, it's right there. It's, it's, yeah. That's far. Yeah. 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 Yes, far. that's right. Uh-huh. Yeah, I I, I went that. there the day before Sun and Fun. They had their seaplane fly in, and they're a good group of guys up there and a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. I, I've been putting off my seaplane rating only because if I put it off until I get my commercial, then I can do my commercial seaplane and I don't have to do another check ride. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, so where are you going tonight, Valerie? You had a party or something, right? Well, it's a webinar. It's a party a webinar. webinar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a webinar. It's with uh, M0A. Okay. okay, it's done. Yep, yep, yeah. yep, yep, with uh, Jason Shepard. And we have a webinar every Monday night at 8 p.m. Oh. And uh, tonight, I forgot what it was about, but it's going to be a live webinar. Okay. And, uh, yeah, so that's our schedule every Monday night at 8 p.m. We have uh, uh, a webinar about aviation. So that's, yes. that's my, my well, schedule. that good. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Any well, party for you guys? Well, my mother and I, <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about going down to South Beach and uh, checking out the um, all the Art Deco buildings all lit up and everything at night. So, I think that's what we're going to do. Although it looks like she's washing her face right now. Oh, um, so it's time to go to bed. <laughs> oh my God, we've been in too long. <laughs> I have a massage today, so I, I think oh. my night's like pretty chill, low key. So nice, yeah. nice. Well, thank you, Valerie. I, uh, I wish that I, I this was kind of a last minute trip actually for me to come down here. Um, I wish. I knew you were in Miami. Yeah. I would have met you there. That that yeah. would have been like a given. I would have been there uh, probably yesterday. Yeah. Know, maybe to spend the night or something after yeah. after training at uh, American Flyers. I would probably you know, yeah. meeting you there. That would have been even fun. though I was even though I was brain dead, but I, I, I was still yeah. I, I was so <laughs> tired. So um, we can't. We tried to get together like a few weeks ago too, and the plane that I was, my friend Ted, his, his plane went down, and we couldn't fly it. So yeah. it was like, are you guys coming up to the Atlanta social? I can't. Yeah, I saw that happening. I can't. Yeah, I think my next event will be the uh, Women in Aviation, which I'm scheduled for. Yeah, and, and then um, Sun and Fun. Yeah, that's right. I can't well, believe it's coming up so quickly. I know. Yeah, yeah I know. Right there. Hopefully, yeah. I'll see you in Orlando for sure at the Women in Aviation Convention somehow. Yeah, I'm scheduled. I'm planning to be there probably the day before, so I don't okay. have to rest the day off. Yeah. Okay. Good. Will you fly yeah. up? 
I'm hoping to fly her. Yeah, I'm really hoping. Yeah. That's the goal. Yeah. So if I can fly in uh, on Thursday, that would be the idea. Let me yeah. know. I mean, if you want to come I'll, in with I'll, me. That, I'll you know, let you, you know. know. Yeah, let me know. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Well, thank you. Have a good night. Thank Enjoy you your guys. webinar. <laughs> Bye. 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 Thank you for listening to this episode of Cockpits and Cocktails with Captain Valerie, myself, and Alyssa. We both really enjoyed talking to Captain Valerie, and I was actually in Florida when we recorded this podcast while Alyssa was in the winter temps of Illinois. Valerie and I were in southern Florida enjoying the sunshine, the beach, the, the warmth, the humidity. It was wonderful. I love Florida. Thank you for listening, and until next time, fly safe, blue skies, and thanks again.